hello, hello, hello. Testing. One, two, three. Hello, hello, hello. All right. I have also tested. Well, see, you look so cool. You do look I'm in, so I'm in Bermuda. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sick. <laughs> wow. Uh, um, okay. Shall we? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's begin. Oh, is that one of our cups? Yeah. Oh my God, that's amazing. Um, all right. Hello and welcome. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> uh, Hello, and welcome to Web Crawlers, the podcast where we do a deep dive into some of our favorite unsolved mysteries. Each week, we will introduce our topic, lay out our research and findings, reveal some conspiracy theories, and conclude with our own hypothesis. Who knows? We might even solve a case. I am Allie Siegel. I'm Melissa Stettin. And who are you? <laughs> who are you? Oh, I'm Maria. Oh, Hi. oh, nice to meet you. Oh, hi. Um, hi. Webcrawlers has a Patreon to get access to rewards, bonus episodes, shout outs, merchandise discounts. Please go to patreon.com slash webcrawlers. You can donate as little as $2 a month to become one of our bimbo patrons. Maybe one of these days we'll get around to the Netflix party. Maybe. Maybe. You've, you've been promising that for weeks. I know. <laughs> it's um, been years. It's been, it, yeah, there's no time in quarantine. <laughs> Um, Erios also has a hotline. Um, insert jingle here. Perfect. Um, it's really been popping off. We get so many messages, so please uh, keep them coming and we'll play them all on our Friday mini episodes. Do the other ear? Yes, sexual, Melissa. Yeah, fix Melissa, up. did you put on makeup for this? Yeah, I, I put on lipstick. <laughs> well, you're looking great. Thank yeah, you. Jesus, it, you guys should all be Patreons, patrons, because Melissa is bringing it today to Zoom. I showered for the first time in. Look, I don't know if it's been a week, but it's been <laughs> at least four days. <laughs> She's in Bermuda. She's showered. She's wearing lipstick. She looks yeah. great. I Thank wish you. we were in Bermuda. I know. Oh, oh my God. I wanted, when this is over, I want to take a trip to Hawaii so bad. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you. Allie, I saw, I, I'm part of Scott's cheap flights. I don't know if you have that. No, I don't. Oh, oh yeah. And round trip, August through November, Hawaii from Burbank. $280. Holy what? shit, that's crazy. My question yeah. though is, is that are the hotels going to be cheaper? I don't know. Are right. we allowed are we going to be allowed to travel in August? I don't know. June, July. Well, that's Mar the thing. Maria, you you have no info. I have nothing. <laughs> All I know, I just know that there's a good price out there. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. These are stairs. These are like what stairs are. This is what is zoom well, background or stairs. You're getting you're getting ready for our episode already. Um, yeah. Melissa, who are our patrons today? We have Stephanie O, Phoebe M, Nicolette V, Christina K, Angie M, Sarita J, Hannah K, and Thomas K. Say, oh, I wonder if Hannah and Thomas are either siblings or married. It's possible. That's pretty exciting. Um, well, possible. Anything's possible. Well, thank you guys so much for joining, and, and uh, some pretty cool things will be coming your way soon. Uh, Melissa, should we get into the episode for today? Yes. Let's Our do main it. story, Michael Peterson was yes. convicted of the death of his wife, Kathleen, who was found dead at the bottom of their staircase in 2001. Michael's indictment, trial, and conviction were all documented in the 13-part docuseries on Netflix called The Staircase. Yes. To this day, Michael maintains his innocence. What really happened to Kathleen? Could an owl be to blame? Let's, Let's find, find 
Oh. It used to be let's get into it. Let's you guys changed get your cat um, into it. Let's it. <laughs> not just switch things up. Keep it fresh and new. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's not how you create a brand. That is true. That's a good point. I'm sorry. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Who is Michael Peterson? So he's a author of, of crime books. He co-wrote books with a lot of journalists. Mm because he's like the fiction guy and they're like the facts people. So he, I haven't read any of his books. They're on Amazon. So mm. I don't know. Okay, Piggles, it's okay. Piggles. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, he, Pig Piggles, calm down. He's okay, Piggles. It's okay, Angel. It's all right. Piggles, it's okay. It? Craig just walked up by the window and she- Oh. <laughs> That's that's Papa Piggles. That's Papa. It's Papa Piggles. That's Papa. He's okay. Papa, can you hear me? Papa. <laughs> so Michael Peterson, he married his first wife Patricia in 1996. They had two kids. He had many affairs with men and women during their marriage. Uh -huh. So they had a woke marriage. No, well, well at this. <laughs> during the during this time he didn't she during this marriage she didn't know about it the first marriage his he, okay the, he's married two times yes the first marriage she didn't know about the extra marriage right stuff. this was kathleen okay um so he also enlisted in the u.s marine corps in 1968 he served in vietnam but he was honorably discharged in 1971 from injuries that he got from a car accident he claimed that he was awarded two Purple Hearts. He said he had the medals, but not the documentation for them. A little suspicious. He said he got one Purple Heart after being hit by shrapnel when another soldier stepped on a landmine, and the other when he was shot. And he eventually admitted that his war injury was not the result of shrapnel in Vietnam, but it was the result of a car accident in Japan. So he That's was interesting. Kinda, yeah, That's it was weird. a little interesting background on him. Yeah. Um, so Michael and Patricia. Hold on, I'm sorry. <laughs> Craig just started vacuuming because he broke. <laughs> he broke a lid of something, and I <laughs> so if you could just hold on a second. I'm sorry. It's okay. Martin. He got opened a cabinet new... and oh, and a no. lid fell fell, fell uh, like a pot lid fell out and um. Can I tell you about this new vacuum that I got? Yes. Martin got, it's a Dyson. I don't know what kind it is. This is the most amazing vacuum I've ever had. We are vacuuming up our little rugs. So much cat hair and dirt is coming out. Like we vacuum like once a week. Like we have like a regular vacuum. This vacuum has changed my goddamn life. It is insane. The stuff that's coming out of our carpets. And we're very clean people. Wow. Yeah. Also, another thing that I got, you know, like when you get on sweaters and couches, you get those little pills of like little fabric, little balls that like get stuck. I got What's one of those Allie things. laughing at? <laughs> what are you doing? I'll send, it to, I'll send it to you in a second. Asher's being insane. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Mark. It's, it's a little thing where you like, it's kind of like shaving like your couch and stuff. Like if it's, there's material sticking out. It gets rid of it. I did that for hours last night because, like, my cats will, like, you know, yeah. at my couch and little stuff will stick out of it. <laughs> All my furniture looks brand new. Uh, I'm going to post a video of it. <laughs> my mind is blown. What kind of Dyson is it? I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> wow, that sounds us, great. I'll There's nothing more that. satisfying than a good vacuum. Blow oh, my, my God. Anyway, back to Michael Peterson. <laughs> Can you, you can't hear the vacuuming, but um, no, I, don't. I just won't, you can cut it, get, keep going, because you can cut yeah, out Yeah, I can just audio. cut out your audio. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, sorry, where was I? Okay. Um, so, Michael and Patricia lived in Germany for a while, and they befriended another couple next door neighbors, Elizabeth and George, who had two kids as well. I wonder if they knew Hilda. Das is Hilda. Who? No, no, no one remembers. Never mind. 
<laughs> you remember Das's Yilda from the Hinter Kaifek episode. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um, so George died in 1983 in a military operation. Then two years later, Elizabeth died by falling downstairs in her home. Uh, Michael was the last person who saw her that night. They had dinner together at Elizabeth's house. And then Michael stayed to help her with the dishes. So he was the last person who saw her. And then oh. she was discovered by the maid the next morning. Weird. So, yes, yeah, suspicious. Yeah. Mike, Michael and Patricia adopted the two kids that uh, Elizabeth uh, and George left behind. Uh, these two kids' names were Margaret and Martha. That's and they, really nice. Right. And they both call uh, Michael Peterson dad. Right, they do, yeah. Yeah, Michael and Patricia got divorced in 1987. Two years later, in 1989, Michael moved in with Kathleen Atwater, and they married in 1997. Cool. Um, on December 9th, 2001, Michael and Kathleen were hanging out in the backyard over their North Carolina mansion by the pool when Kathleen went back inside. Michael went inside and found her at the bottom of the stairs. He called 911. Oh, yeah. And there's like Play a big call. Yeah, there's like a frantic 911 call. Is that on the internet anywhere? Yeah, I'll play it. Actually, I'll play it on my phone because I don't know if you could hear it on my uh... Can you guys hear that? No. No, are you playing the? Uh... It was playing on my computer, but I'll play oh. it on uh, my phone. Allegedly had like a really idyllic, perfect marriage. We're super happy with yeah. these kids. Um, and they also had kids of their own at this point, too. Kathleen had uh, two children of her own, I believe. So they had five children all together. Yeah, okay, wait, let's see. Or maybe they had one uh, on her own because they had two adopted. And then... Hold on. Um, okay. Uh, children five. Okay. Michael Peterson. Hold on. Um, I want to see who the kids are. Michael Peterson kids. Yeah. Kathleen had one from a previous marriage. So Patricia and Michael had two. Then, then um, they had two more adopted. And then Kathleen already had a child from her previous marriage. So they had five all together. Okay. So who, okay, so Martha, so Martha and Margaret are the adopted kids. Yes. And then Kathleen, uh, Kathleen has a daughter named Caitlin. Yes. Um, and she, she initially supported Michael Peterson, but then ultimately thought that yeah, he was guilty. She changed his stance after she, changed, she found out that he was by that. Yes, and then uh, so that's three kids, and then they also have. Uh, hey, Kitty. 
then two from Michael's first marriage from Patricia. And then Todd and Clay. Yes. Okay. Uh, so those are the five kids. Okay. Um, so then <laughs> Michael goes to explain what happened that night. Uh, <laughs> they rented a movie from Blockbuster. They rented America's Sweetheart starring Julia Roberts and Catherine Zeta Jones. Have you seen that? Yeah, a long time ago. I actually feel like it's a good movie. And also Billy John Crystal? Crystal? crazy. And you know John Cusack. Crazy? What? Did you watch this last night, Maria? No. I've seen The Staircase. Like, I know all this. But whenever I'm buttering toast, I think of that scene from America's Sweethearts. Do you know that scene where Julia Roberts... Do you want to ask, ask her sister or whatever to make the toast for her? Well, no, she, she wakes up with John Cusack or whatever, like they spent the night together and he butters her toast. And she went, you're buttering, she goes, you're buttering my toast. No one's ever buttered my toast before. Oh, I don't remember that. I, and I also got the scene because wrong. Because she's, she's so used to taking care of her sister. Oh, that. right. Oh. Um, so I thought of that line this morning and then you just said that. Oh, and I was weird. Like, oh, whoa. What? Weird. How crazy. Synchronicity That's that... That's weird. That stuff freaks me out. That's the simulation. Yeah, but I always think of it when I butter toast, so. Okay, well, it's a simulation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, they, yeah, they read that. Uh, they said they went to sit by the pool and drink some wine, and then Kathleen went inside to go to bed. Uh, she had also taken Valium that night. Yeah, because she said she'd recently been getting really bad headaches, and she had been even calling, like, her mom and, like, her sister and stuff like that to say she'd been getting headaches. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, so they find her body, and then the ma medical examiner found lacerations on Kathleen's head. But there was no bruising or skull fractures. Right. So weird. Martin. Uh, the blood splatter expert said that the amount of blood would be from an attack. Yeah. This is the blood splatter expert who... He's, Alleged expert. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about him a little later. Um, and then they... Is, while they someone were, is someone else in the room with you right now? No. Oh my god, in your video, there was just like a black spot next to you. Oh, I saw that too. <laughs> it's there again. Oh no. Oh no. Is there a ghost? Maybe it's because of the, the background is. Oh, I saw that too. Oh, weird. Maybe oh. It's, hmm. What do you think that is? I don't know. Because usually when that happens, it's like, I don't know. I feel like your a bo your body does. It. Oh, Melissa! <laughs> Melissa, I hate you. Melissa, seriously, I hate you. <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> oh my god. Bye, Melissa. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> will, you, will you do that again? I want to record it. <laughs> so what I did, so in, <laughs> for Zoom backgrounds, you can change it to video or, uh, or images. So I was like, oh, I'll record a video of my office, my room, and I'll wait two minutes. I'll have Martin come in, like, oh, sorry, <laughs> like open the door. And then Hello. I'll walk in myself. To make it look like I'm walking in on myself. <laughs> Do it again. That was incredible, it's, Melissa. It's playing right now. It go, it's two minutes. So I had Martin, because Martin's not here, but I had him walk in to like, oh, that's why, because the green screen's a little, you can't really move oh, that well. Oh my god. That's so funny. So it's gonna, it's gonna do it at some point? Yeah, Martin will come in. And then I come in like 30 seconds after. That's so <laughs> crazy. That's amazing. Um, oh my god, that really blew my mind. Yeah, blew my mind too. Oh, there's Martin. Bye, Martin. <laughs> I like that acting by Martin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> How do I get it? Make it. Wow. Wow, that's that's insane. This chair. Oh, there we go. It's okay. 
Um, so they were recreating like the scene to see if like everything that Michael said could have happened. And their house was so big, they lived in like a mansion. So they were like, well, could you hear someone screaming or falling down the stairs if he was, you know, sitting out by the pool? Like why didn't, cause he, it was like a half hour after she left the pool to go inside that he came inside. So she was there for like, I don't know, a half hour. And so they recreated, they tried to like, yeah, someone screaming in the house. <laughs> there I am. I have someone screaming in the house. <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> and they couldn't hear. Interesting. Out by the pool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me change this background. So they, Kitty. So they couldn't hear someone in the house screaming because their house huh. was, they lived in like a mansion. Hello, hello. Yeah. So that, they did, like, they recreated a lot of things. Um, and then this documentary crew Hello. starts filming Hello. weeks after Kathleen dies. This oh, crew. no, wait. Ho guys, hold on a second. What? What? Are you not recording? No, I was, but then it unplugged for a second, and now I'm afraid it's not recording again. Hold well, on. Well, it's okay, because Melissa can download the audio yeah. of the Zoom. Because I'm recording the Zoom. There, now it's, now it's recording again. There was, like, three minutes, maybe, well, or okay. one minute where it wasn't recording. Okay. But I'll have the audio from the Zoom, too. Okay, good. It's recording again. Sorry. Um, bah, 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 bah. So, yeah, this documentary crew shows up. It's this French guy, and they, like, weeks after Kathleen's death, mm -hmm. and so they are there for everything. They shoot yeah, which over is crazy. 600 hours of footage. Whoa. It's crazy. Okay, so, so, so then um, the trial starts in 2003. Yeah, two uh, years after she died. Right. Um, so the defense team is David Rudolph, who was actually on the team for Stephen Avery, oddly enough. Yeah. Um, Dr. Warren Spitz, who's one of the most renowned pathologists in the world, um, who worked on the JFK assassination, Martin Luther King, Casey Anthony, O.J. Simpson, and he was sued by John Benet's brother, who Spitz accused of killing John Benet. And he said that Kathleen's death was from a fall. Yeah, uh, like he's a pro. Like he... Yeah, he's not he's like, like a... He's like also death. 90 years old too, because he worked on the JFK. I was like, how old is this guy? He's like yeah. 90. Um, so the prosecution said that Michael killed Kathleen with a fireplace poker, mm -hmm. that he like poked her in the head. I think it was like three times and then... Yeah. And then, like, bludgeoned her, and she uh, fell down the stairs. Yeah. Um, the documentary crew, uh, but they said that the poker was missing. So right. they, as they assumed that um, he had killed her with the poker and then disposed of it somehow. Right. Um, and this was the, their leading testimony was that, you know, like, this was, this was how they were trying to incarcerate him. Um, but the documentary crew found the poker later in the garage, but it was dismissed because of how long it had been sitting. Yeah, um, they were in the in the staircase. They show them like in the basement or in the garage or whatever, and they like see it. They're like, "Holy shit, is this the murder weapon?" Right. But then even weirder, or the quote unquote murder weapon. Um, but then even weirder is that. Uh, so when the, finally they get a retrial and uh, David Rudolph uh, discovers that the police actually did find the fireplace poker in 2002 and they photographed themselves with it. Oh. But, yeah, but they thought that it was a coat hanger and not a, a fireplace poker so they ended up just putting it back. And they did oh, not right. tell David Rudolph or Michael Peterson or the judge or anyone about this. Um, and they continued to just say that the, the fireplace poker was not only the murder uh, weapon. It has like rust on it, so, sorry. 
<laughs> what, what, what has rust on it? What has rust what, on it? What, what's rusty? I'm sorry. Oh, that's, I told, remember, on the bottom. No, she eats off of it. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> He's taking a picture. Uh, love, love you. <laughs> <laughs> he should have seen his face. He started talking and then he went. <laughs> The world of <laughs> podcasting on Zoom. This, my it's background crazy. is making my head shape so deformed. <laughs> it's like, you're like an alien. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like an egghead. <laughs> it's horrible. Um, so they didn't tell the defense about that. Um, and then they also exhumed Elizabeth Ratliff's body, yeah. who is the first woman um, who Michael Peterson knew who fell down the stairs, the mother of his adopted children. And they actually changed that from uh, an accident to a homicide in yeah. 2003. So that's still like unsolved. Yeah. Weird. So... He, his bisexuality became an issue in the trial because it was before everyone was woke and we knew that everybody was a little bit gay. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> so he, Michael claims that he had an open relationship with Kathleen. Right. Where they were married and he could have sex with men. He said that she knew about everything and she was okay with it. But Caitlin who's Kathleen's daughter from a previous marriage, was originally on Michael's side, but when she found this out, she was like, oh no, he's guilty. He, mur yeah. he murdered, because she's, yeah. Um, and so this escort- She seemed like a prude bitch. Yeah, she was a real prude bitch. Yeah. And so this escort that Michael had been communicating with, Brad, he actually gave testimony and it was like, it was really good testimony. He was smart and he made people laugh and yeah. he was like really well-spoken. And he said that most of the men that he saw were professionals because his fees were high. They were like doctors, lawyers, mm -hmm. one judge. And then like everyone laughed and the judge was like, it's not this judge. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> uh -huh. So he said the men he would see were predominantly straight with minor homosexual tendencies, which right. kind of describes Michael, I guess. And, and he everybody. Also said, yeah, and everybody. He also said most of the men he saw who were married said that their wives knew they were bisexual. And yeah. he said that Michael told him that he had a great relationship with his wife and nothing would ever destroy it. And also, like, the kids back this up. Yeah, the kids of all, all except for the one kid. Right. Caitlin. All his kids that were like, we knew dad was a little gay and, and yeah. nobody cared. Also, yeah. also um, the prosecution, Frida Black, uh, disclosed oh, this, that he, this she had, <laughs> he had like gay porn on his computer and that like because oh my of that. Oh God, he, yeah. Yeah, and like because of that, he was a murderer. Yeah, she was Frida Black. Yeah. You got, if you watch the documentary, she is an intense woman. Yeah. She looks like she's from like the 80s, even though it's like the 90s and like the early 2000s. Totally. The first time I saw this documentary, I thought it was from the 80s, but based it looks, on how she yeah, looks. It's everyone's, it's so crazy. Yeah. So she claimed that he was a liar because he's an author. Yeah. She's like, he's an author. You can make up stories. You can make up anything. Yeah, like, he makes up stories for a living, yeah. so therefore he made up this murder plot, and he definitely yeah. did it. She also said that you, if you have hardcore porn or filth on your computer, you're capable of anything. Crazy. So, that's crazy. She also said, do you think Kathleen would have been okay with Michael going off having sex with men? That is not the way soulmates conduct themselves. By the way, like, I know bisexual men who are in relationships with women, but, like, have sex with men. Yeah. If, I like, actually that's a, don't. That's a thing that, like, like, if you were in a, like, if my husband was, like, look, I love you, but I love men, too, and I just want to go have sex with them, like, I would be, like, okay, like, I don't. 
I think that would be fine. <laughs> Maria's face. Yeah. And voice like, keeps getting like it's not uncommon. It's not like well, something that's not it, a deal breaker. Yeah, yeah well, Melissa, prove it. I don't think Martin is attracted to men, but if he was and he well, was like, there you go. That I need to do, I would be like, okay, you know what? That's fine. You know what? Yeah. I mean, also just for reality's sake, I I only know one couple who is a bisexual man and uh, who's dating a woman. He's like, I'm in love with this woman. She is my soulmate. But sexually, there's something that I can only be satiated by having sex with a man. Mm -hmm. And I am in like an emotional really, I will never have sex with a woman other than her. But sometimes I want to be like sexually gratified by a man. And so that's like the stipulations of their relationship. Yeah, I have a friend who's married, and, and the woman is the one. She's like, I'm kind of gay, and I want to hook up with women, so. Oh, I know like, tons cool. of that. Yeah, he's and like, I know. cool, go for it. Oh, yeah, I know a bajillion of those. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she, she was like a real-life Cruella de Vil. Like, oh, she yeah. was, she was, she was a nasty <laughs> woman. Yeah, she was. She was, but she, in 2012, and 2006, 2016, she was arrested for DUIs. She oh my was, God, really? Yeah, she ended up, she's working at a dry cleaners. Like she lost her job. And oh she God. ended up dying in 2018 of liver disease. Like her oh, life. Oh no. She was alcoholic. Yeah, she was like a she hardcore alcoholic. Got, she got disbarred. Oh, like it was, oh shit. Yeah, some really bad. Ellie, your her. body looks insane right now <laughs> because your chair <laughs> it looks like it looks like you don't have a neck <laughs> you're like you're like you Ed for like 90 days lady. <laughs> you look like a lunch lady with that she got pineapples on your shirt <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're 5,000 pounds to be honest <laughs> screenshot of this <laughs> oh my god that's so funny because what's happening is your shirt's being pulled up by the chair yeah. that you're on yeah. <laughs> my oh my god my my goal is for everyone on the podcast who thinks i'm hot to just very <laughs> very quickly be <laughs> oh Oh my god. It's so funny. Guess what? I have the confidence to not move from this position. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, well, that sucks for Michael Peterson even more. Like, everyone on the prosecution ended up being, like, disbarred or fired from their job for, like, incompetence after yeah. his, his trial. It was um, crazy. Okay, so Michael was found guilty in 2003, unanimously, obviously. Yeah. Um, he was sentenced to life in prison. Uh, multiple appeals were filed and they were all denied. Yeah. Um, so part of the reason why he was found guilty was this blood spatter expert. Um, his name was Dwayne Deaver. And he was like, basically the way that this blood is splattered, 100% means that it was not a fall. I've worked yeah. on all these cases where there were falls. And this is not one of them. This is definitely a homicide. Um, and like, I can tell that, you know, these are the points of impact and blah, blah. Um, after this case, he was accused of falsifying evidence in 34 cases. It was and, crazy. Yeah. So he uh, basically would just work for prosecution and fabricate experiments to fit the results that they wanted. Yeah. Um, on on um in the case for michael peterson he said that he had done like 500 cases before and it turned out that he had only done three cases oh my god (laughs) i just said it had only done three cases he'd only done two fingers (laughs) yeah (laughs) he'd only done three cases before the peterson case And literally zero of them had to do with anyone falling. That's crazy. Uh, Yeah. So he was essentially essentially just lying on the stand. Um, And he was also responsible for a testimony, uh, an incorrect testimony, which got another person life in prison. Um, This guy, Greg Taylor. 
And he was later released, Greg Taylor was released from life in prison because of Dwayne Deaver's incorrect reportings. So Damn. yeah, so Dwayne Deaver has a history of falsifying experiments, incorrect reporting, um, and just being shitty at his job uh, to the effect of like ruining people's lives. So Deaver. yeah, fucking Deaver. Um, fucking Deaver. Um, so on December 16th, 2011, Michael was re- released from jail on a 300,000 uh, bail, $300,000 bail, and placed under house arrest with an ankle bracelet because Judge Hudson found that the blood analyst Dwayne Deaver had given material misleading and deliberately false testimony about bloodstained evidence and had exaggerated his training experience and expertise. So essentially, finally, um, one of their appeals went through. Yeah, he appealed so many times, like every few months, every so many appeals, and they're like, nope, nope, nope. It's yeah, crazy. but finally this, this one worked. Yeah. Um, and then on February 24th, 2017, Michael entered an Alford plea, mm-hmm. which is a guilty plea entered because sufficient evidence exists to convict him of the offense, but the defendant asserts innocence. So Michael's like, I'm innocent, but I'll, I'll plead guilty because yeah. I'm like 80 years old and, and like, I don't, I'm over this. Yeah. Um, the judge sentenced him to a maximum of 86 months in prison with credit for time previously served. Because Michael had already served more time than the sentence, uh, 98.5 months, he did not go back to jail. No. Nope. Which is great. Yeah, the West Memphis Three also did an Alford plea. Oh, that's Remember, interesting. Remember, because they, one of them didn't want to do it. Because it's basically, you admit that there's enough evidence to accuse you of doing this. Oh. That, that you're not going to win in a trial. But oh. if you say that, you'll get time served. So one of the West Memphis Three, like out of principle, he's like, I don't want to fucking do this. Yeah. But because of the other two people with them, he's like, I'm doing it for these guys because we'll all get out of prison, but they won't be able to like sue anybody because oh, they're considered guilty. Which It's kind of a shitty thing to do, like for people who are truly innocent. Innocent. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Because they can't, they have no recourse. They can't sue anyone or like wrongfully. Right. Anything. It's crazy. So... A fun fact about Michael Peterson's house, it's, oh, it's almost 10,000 square feet. It's in Durham, North Carolina. It was a filming location for the 1990 movie Handmaid's Tale. Shut up, really? I didn't even know there was a 1990 Handmaid's Tale movie. Yeah, but it's not from, it's not the same Handmaid's Tale, I don't think. Oh, wait, I maybe it is. Margaret Atwood. I always get it mixed up with The Handmaiden's Tale. Mmm. <laughs> Very similar. To me. I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, The Handmaiden. There's a movie called The Handmaiden, which is a Korean, um, which is like a Korean thriller. Oh. And uh, I always. The house, his house is currently owned by a psychic who, ironically, was not aware of the house's history or the Peterson case when he purchased it. Oh my god, I wonder if the psychic <laughs> feels, feels stuff when... Well, he had no idea what was going on there, so maybe not. Also a crazy thing, Michael dated the Staircase editor. Yes, isn't that wild? Woman, <laughs> yeah, this woman, Sophie Benoit, starting in 2003, for 15 years while he was in prison. Yeah, they dated the whole duration of the documentary, essentially. Yeah. And, and so yeah, looks like both of his ex-wives. Yeah. Isn't that Crazy. bizarro? Yeah, he it's definitely so has weird. a type. He has um, a type. Yeah. So let's talk about some theories. Um, first theory, obviously, is that Michael killed Kathleen. All right. So maybe Kathleen discovered Michael's secret bisexual life and wanted to end their marriage. It was the main motive that the prosecution offered uh, at trial for Kathleen's murder. 
the other being a 1.5 million life insurance policy. Um, so, and also what are the chances that he was alone with two women who both fell down the stairs? Additionally, uh, I think I have it on my phone. That is uh, weird. What okay, a weird so, coincidence. Yeah, so there is also, um, there is also a life insurance policy with the first woman who died. Oh, but so when he was adopt since he adopted the kids of of oh. Elizabeth of Elizabeth Rat of Elizabeth Ratliff, he he um, got her life insurance policy. Oh, really? Yeah. So he got both Kathleen's life insurance policy and he got Elizabeth Ratliff's life insurance policy. Oh, right, because her husband had already died. Because her husband had already died. So through adopting her children, he got right. her life insurance policy. But, like, they were already rich because Kathleen was, like, a business executive. Like, she was making a lot of money. He was making money from being an author. Right. Also, like, if you watch the documentary, he seems like a pretty cool guy. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that he murdered her. I mean, what? it's very. Are the police coming to arrest you? Yeah, they're going to arrest the both of you for a bad take. You're guilty of a bad did. take. I. It's it's a little coincidental that two women he was with fell down the stairs and died. A little. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I was thinking, of this editor woman has seen everything. She's seen all the footage, and if right. she still wanted to date him then people want to date murderers all the time that's yeah i was true. about to say that's, that's like yeah. that's like harley quinn and the joker she was the joker psychologist and fell in love with him but all of the kids aside from kathleen's daughter from her other marriage they support him and they're like we love our dad there's no way even after they've seen all the evidence yeah are you gonna play another prank on us me yeah no, I don't have any more pranks. Oh. Hope we can do this prank again. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I don't, I don't, it seems very obvious that he did it, but I feel like I'm a pretty good judge of character and I don't think he did it. Should I get Craig in here? Cause he'll, he'll burst both your bubbles. He thinks Michael did it? Big time. Yeah, no, get Craig, yeah, get Craig in here. Hey, Craig. <laughs> Can you come here for a moment? I think she fell because she took Valium and her blood alcohol level was 0.07, which is kind of high. Would you mind just telling the girls, <laughs> they, they seem to think Michael Peterson didn't kill his wife in the staircase. <laughs> <laughs> here, just put this on really quickly. Why don't All right, you think let's... he killed his wife? <laughs> Well, I think Melissa thinks the owl did it. Well, I think- uh, Look, this is, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, you go it's ahead, just... you go ahead. No, you go, you All go right. ahead. All right, two women in his <laughs> life fall down. I mean, for the love of, is it this easy, ladies, to get away with murdering you? Yes. Really? Yeah. It's that easy, you really would over, how many people in your life have <laughs> fallen down a staircase and died? None. Twice. <laughs> not only, do, but that's not enough for you. You think what explains it is a fucking owl coming in. It's so impossible. now you have. <sighs> so two women in this guy's life fall down the stairs and die, but the second one is from an owl. It's an unfortunate coincidence, but it, I feel like if his no kids, way. his kids, no he seems like he's, a nice guy. <laughs> I think his, I mean, his really kids is. are like, his kids believe him. And because I don't, of the fact that like, can you imagine that trauma of going, my mom just died. And I don't want to lose my dad too. And he's saying he didn't yeah, do it. That's a good point. I, you know, but nothing, it, it, it's all, it, none of it matters. It's two women in his life falling down. The first one happened and he got away with it and he was like, all right, well, there you go. 
I'm keeping that in my back pocket. But what did he gain from that? He gained two children? Well, he gained the fact that he was allowed to carry on his, you know, his gay relationships he had, you know, going on in secret without being divorced and all that other stuff. And that the life insurance policy. <clears throat> right. Yeah, and the life and well, obviously. Yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> Dude, like Maria said, like, I, there's some odd thing. It, there's, and I do think it's like a a, a man woman divide here because I, yeah, like, yeah, way more women are always like, oh no no, there's a possibility he didn't do it. Every guy I know within a half an hour is like, what the fuck, he's killed. What, what are you crazy? We should do yeah. a a male female poll to see who to see if that's correct. Yeah, it is interesting. There's some there's something. Um, there's something to that that whole thing where some women fall in love with serial killers. And yeah. Mm -hmm. There's something to that, like where it's like, well, wait, why? N no guy is sitting outside of prison waiting <laughs> for a girl. Like, it's just not happening. You know? Yeah, it's, that's true. It's tied yeah. into like that and the whole the Munchausen by proxy. Uh huh. Yep. You've yep. heard of that. Oh, that's, yeah. What is that? Like, yeah, that's like 94% women who do that. Yeah, ninety four percent. I mean, that's it is crazy. There's another stat. I don't know if I, I, you know. I'm just gonna throw out a. I, I, I don't know the exact stat, but if uh, like a a, a a baby is the most likely perpetrator of killing a baby, is its own mother, and it's mm -hmm. not even. I close. believe that like, up until like five years old, like it, it's not even close. Oh, I had mothers are responsible for more, yeah, for more murders of babies than any. And I mean, I, I guess it kind of makes sense. No one's walking on the street killing babies. But. Well, that's also an animal trait. <clears throat> what? Killing your baby, like in the wild, I feel like that happens pretty frequently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Hybristophilia is the name for for falling in love with a, oh, yeah. a, oh, with yeah. a murderer or a killer. Yeah, you Zero guys should color. explore that. That's really, because uh, that's a, I, I think that's tied to some sort of like primitive DNA of like wanting the most violent man to protect you or something. Yeah. Like, oh, sure. It's a, hunter, it's a hunter gatherer thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Man, we're all anyway. fucked up. <laughs> all right. Well, but the, 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 the is wild. Delete all the parts where you said that that Peterson guy is innocent. That's just, <laughs> <laughs> just go and whatever. No, we're just going to splice them and say that you did it. It's just going to be your voice being like, Michael Peterson definitely it, is it, innocent. Is innocent. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Melissa, you really think so? No, I don't think he did. It I think she fell. So <laughs> I think she fell. I don't know. <laughs> What if, do you know anyone? But, but, you're uh, but like, you're, uh, the way, like, the children thing is really, like, that's no, kind of changing no, my mind. It, that, it actually makes me really sad because when you see those kids and they just, it's like this, I, I don't want to believe that both of my parents. Well, are. it's like the John Bonet thing, how they're like, oh, because I think the brother did it. And right. the, the parents are like, well, we lost one daughter. We're not going to yeah. say that our son did it. We don't want to lose right. both kids. Yeah, yeah, That's, there's like this wanting to just, just accept not, it. Right, right, because your entire yeah. world's already flipped and you're going to flip yeah. it even more if that's the case. And you're just like, I can't allow that to. By the way, yeah. these headphones aren't working at all. There's nothing coming out of them. What? I don't hear anything. <laughs> I, hear, I, I hear them. Oh, yeah, but I don't yeah, hear you're any not supposed to hear you. Oh, okay. Well, I'm a neophyte. 12,000 people a year die from falling down the stairs. Yeah. How many of them are pushed by Michael Peterson? <laughs> Two. Um, 12,000 people a year? All right, I guess I could, that's, that makes some sense. Yeah, most, probably mostly old. I mean, people. I wonder like, yeah, old or I, I would imagine yeah. a lot are carrying things. That's, probably, that's uh, 0 0.01 of the population. Point, you mean of the deaths? 2 Wait, point. 12,000? Okay, 2.420 people die from an accidental fall, which is 0 0.01 of the population and 1.78% of all deaths. Okay. Wow, that's more than I thought. I mean, I, well, I guess, yeah, yeah, that's more than I thought, though. One point, a lot, how many a lot people, of people die from owls? 
Ichiro. Oh my God. Well, do you want to hear this other thing? <laughs> do you want to hear this other thing that just came up? Yeah. Sure. How, how many people a year die from coconuts? 150 people a year die from coconuts falling from trees. I believe it. I can see that. You're in a tropical climate. You're hanging out under a tree yeah. trying to get some shade. Yeah, you're in Bermuda. 200 oh, people a year die from ah, coconut. coconut. Ah. <laughs> 200 people a year die what? 200 people a year die from owl or hawk attacks. Uh huh. 200 people? Yeah. And how many are inside of a house? How many are inside of a house? <laughs> it could have been while she was running into the house. Ah, oh. no. Ah. And then she ran up the stairs. Oh. I mean, I. Uh, All right. Well, All right. Craig, Craig right, so you're, you're a hard no. I mean, you're a hard yes. He did kill yes. her. You guys are, I mean, you, to be clear, <laughs> you really do think Come like that's here. real. I, I don't know. Puppy? I really don't know. Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah, whatever. <sighs> what happened? What happened to her camera? She's eating her dog. Oh. There's something in my dog's mouth. What uh -oh. is, hey, ow. Don't swallow it. I got it. What was it? I don't want to say what it was. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't want to say what it was. All right, good talking to you ladies. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Bye. Craig. Bye. <laughs> wow. It was a wow. toenail. Oh, God. <laughs> a toenail. <laughs> it was a toenail. Ugh. So let's just talk about this owl theory real quick. <laughs> yeah, let's let's get into the owl theory. So in 2009, the new theory was raised is that she'd been attacked by an owl outside that she fell after running inside and she was knocked unconscious after hitting her head. Right. So the owl theory, this was raised by a Durham attorney. T. Lawrence Pollard, he's an, a neighbor of the Petersons. He was not involved in the case at all, but he was just following all the public details. He approached the police suggesting an owl might have been responsible because he was reading all of the case files and the evidence and there was a feather listed on the evidence. So Peterson's attorneys determined that the crime lab reported it listed a microscopic owl feather in a wooden sliver from a tree that was entangled in a clump of hair that was pulled out by the roots found in Kathleen's left hand. Yeah. And so the scalp wounds, they look like owl talons scrape the head. It's like three they really do. marks. They really do. And cedar needles were found on her hands and body, which indicate that she had fallen over outside before entering the house. But wouldn't, her, like, Michael have seen that? Like, if Michael was outside by the pool, wouldn't he have, like, heard or seen her fall well, down? Well, remember, they tested that theory. If someone was screaming by the entrance of the staircase, by the house, oh. could he hear it? And they couldn't hear it. Well, especially oh, if he was laughing so hard at America's Sweethearts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is true. So, and the blood had splattered up the staircase rather than down. Yeah. And her footprints and her own blood indicated that she was already bleeding before she reached the foot of the stairs. Yeah, interesting. And two drops of her blood were found outside the house on the front walkway. Hmm. So these owls that are in the area, barred owls, they were known to attack people, just like unprovoked. They randomly just like swooped down, caw, crush, and hit people. That was they're, beautiful. They're common in that area. And one huh. person who's been bitten by an owl described it as being hit with a baseball bat. Like they just swoop oh in. Oh my God. Wow, that's so maybe crazy. The, the owl got like tangled in her hair and she's like, ah, I'm trying to swoop it away. That's why there's tufts of hair in her hands. Wow, well, I mean, it's definitely possible. But a barred owl? A barred owl is what it's called. B-A-R-R-E-D. -R -E yeah. Okay. But, wow. You know, it's and those are big. Those are those are almost giants. as big as a goose. 
Yeah, the goose. Well, I'm on this. I'm on this website that tells you what what size it is in relativity, Mm -hmm. and so the closer it is to a goose, means the bigger it is. That's almost as big as a goose. (laughs) I don't know, but I, I like Craig's theory on the children just like accepting this or like. Deny, being in denial about it because they don't want to lose their dad as well as their mom. Yeah, two moms. Yeah. Two moms. It's a lot of moms. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. Man, I don't know. I'm just always under, like it's very easy. When you look at like the simplest explanation and you go like, that. it's just, it's very easy to like do these zigzags of like, oh, it could have been this, it could have been this, but then like right. the most it seems like the simplest explanation is their marriage wasn't going great. She had this life insurance and it just, I don't know. It's like, that seems yeah. very plausible to me. Yeah. What, did, what, did he, what did he kill her with then, if not the poker? His pet owl. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he did have another poker or something that he did get rid of. Maybe. I don't, yeah, I don't Or she just yeah. fell and those are just from cracking her head on the stairs. Yeah. So all three theories. Are, we're going to go with all three theories on this I one. I don't know. I really don't know. If you think you uh, know what happened, uh, Melissa, where, where can people find us? You can email us at webcrawlerspod at gmail.com or you can send us an Instagram message or Twitter message at webcrawlerspod or on Facebook. We have a Reddit page. There's a lot of gossip on there. Hot goss about whether or not people hate me. Um, (laughs) (laughs) There is there is a thread about whether or not people hate me going right now. And everyone (laughs) and everyone does not. They're like, I don't get the alley hate. Everyone's like, Yeah, me neither. Oh, I should check it out and join. It's all all the replies are people who are like, Oh, it's a pro. It's become a pro alley thread. It is. It has been. Oh, that's well. Great. I'll get on there. I'll get on there. And, yeah, and yeah, Maria. Back to the direction it should be going. <laughs> Your fake username. I hate Allie yeah. S. I hate Allie sixty nine four twenty. Allie's um, voice makes me, my skin crawl. <laughs> at hotmail.org. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let us know what you think about this and. Uh, For you lucky patrons, you'll get to see the really just insane Zoom. (laughs) It was a whole, it was a real experience. Yeah, this is a Zoom experience. You get to see my dog eating a toenail. You get to see (laughs) Maria's boyfriend in the flesh. Uh, A a lot of Zoom pranks. Um, So anyways, yeah, tune in. Uh, I'm Allie Siegel. I'm Melissa Stutton. I'm Maria. Bye. Bye. Stop. Stop. For some reason, if we're